yesterday I made a video talking about the creation of the Esperanto language. If you don't know what Esperanto is, then I suggest checking out that video before coming here. In this video, I'm going to discuss why I love Esperanto so much, not from a political standpoint, but from a linguistic one. The first reason Esperanto is the perfect international language is because the vocabulary is a combination of all the world languages. Well, more like just Indo-European ones, although mainly just Germanic and Romance. Come on, Zamenhof, you were Polish. Another reason Esperanto works so well is because it's entirely phonemic, and English pronunciation can be a nightmare for foreign students when it comes to long multigraphs of letters that stem from long lines of evolutionary patterns. With Esperanto, one letter is assigned one phoneme or sound. Many are pretty straightforward, but the ones that stand out are J, which makes the Y sound, R, which sounds more like the Spanish R than the English one, and C, which makes the Z sound. For example, Yaro, Rapida, Centro, there are also diacritical letters that are formed by slapping a circumflex over an already existing letter. For example, s becomes ch, g becomes j, y becomes j, s becomes sh, and h becomes h which is a non-English sound, but only used in rare loanwords. And this one still confuses me, but adding a brev to the letter U sounds like W. Still don't get why they couldn't have just used the letter W, but whatever. If you can't type these letters, then you can just use X notation by writing an X after the base letter. Another great feature of Esperanto is its strict grammatical structure, which makes it very, very easy to tell which parts of the sentence are performing which tasks with the use of grammatical suffixes. For example, nominative and accusative parts of the sentence gain different endings as well as verbs. So in the sentence, la hundo trincas akvon, we know that hundo is the subject, trincas is the verb, and akvon is the object. We know this for reasons I'll get into in the next part. All nouns in Esperanto end in the letter O, which is its identifier. Nouns can be made plural by adding a J to the end of the word, but remember that all adjectives describing it will also need to become plural. Remember that J in Esperanto is just like Y in English, so it is used to form diphthongs. For example, OJ sounds like OI in boy, and AJ sounds like I in Y. Esperanto also has a unique accusative marker, which we don't have in English, but can make dissecting a sentence easier when the word order is strange. When a noun is the object of a sentence, an N is placed after the O or after the J if it's plural. A lot of native English speakers will forget this part when speaking Esperanto, but it can be very important to include in some circumstances. Adjectives like nouns can become plural or accusative when they modify plural or accusative nouns. However, adjectives end in A while nouns end in O. For example, la granda katoi manjas la malgrandain musoin. Sometimes one root in Esperanto can form both nouns and adjectives that have similar meanings. For example, felicia means happy while felicho means happiness. Esperanto also has articles, or rather just one article. In Esperanto, to refer to a specific item in a situation one would use the English word the, one would use la. In English, when you use a or an, no article is needed in Esperanto. For example, mi havas libro means I have a book. Mi havas la libro means I have the book. And mi havas libroi means I have books. There are also adverbs in Esperanto which end in E. Adverbs can act like adverbs in English, such as rapide, which means quickly or rapidly. But there are many adverbs which are formed from existing nouns or adjectives that have unique meanings. For example, urbe can mean in the city, and tage can mean in the day. Finally are verbs, which are slightly more complicated than the other parts of speech because they need to be conjugated. But the conjugation is nothing like other languages, because there are only five conjugations and the infinitive. An infinitive is the base form of a verb and can act as a noun. The English equivalent is to plus a verb. For example, manji means to eat. Infinitives in Esperanto always end in the letter I. Past, present, future, and conditional all also get special conjugations. I ran is mi curis. I run is mi curas. I will run is mi curos. And I would run is mi curus. The final conjugation is the imperative, which is how you give commands and has the ending you, such as the website Lernu, which is a great source for learning Esperanto. Okay, quick recap. All Esperanto letters represent one sound with no exceptions. All words have a root and many suffixes that tell things about the grammar. 
The O suffix represents nouns. The A suffix represents adjectives. The E suffix represents adverbs. The J suffix represents plural nouns or adjectives. The N suffix is placed on the object of the sentence and any modifiers. The AS suffix is placed on present tense verbs. The IS suffix is placed on past tense verbs. The OS suffix is placed on future tense verbs. The US suffix is placed on conditional verbs, when one would do something. The I suffix is placed on infinitives, and the U suffix is placed on imperatives. It seems like a lot, but that really is most of the grammar in just a short list of suffixes. Compare the long list of conjugation rules for English, French, or Spanish to the six suffixes in Esperanto, and you'll understand how much time this saves. Ton con prospecti citi un filmeton. Memoru abonimion canalon, caixati la videon. Adiao.